back. This is Jim again, and uh, today we're going to build the map for our world. We're going to build our world, and uh, before we do that, uh, I'm going to need one more uh, actor in here, which is the target, which we're going to be picking up. It's actually supposed to be an aphid, but I'm going to call it a target, um, and it's a target because that's what we're trying to grab. Um, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be an aphid. It's actually an ant. I think they look close enough that it's the same thing for our purposes. Um, and so, what we need to do now, we can start adding things. Um, and. One of the things that, that you're going to find, actually, is when you start adding a lot of objects, it's not so easy for various reasons. Um, I can start trying to add things. Um, one of the things you'll find that's kind of annoying is things don't actually go quite where they're supposed to go. So I might want something to hear and see how it gets like a little bit off from where it's actually supposed to be. So that's kind of annoying. And then I would say, if I want to make this a map. I've got to lay each of these out. It's actually very slow if I try and do this and see how hard it is to actually make it lay it out evenly actually um, and it's still not really very even and what's worse is then when I look at the code look at how um, oh I forgot to sorry it's, it's not gonna if I save the world and look at the code here look at how uh, ugly this is look at how much right not only do I have right I, I, I have the all the different obstacles in here but then look at their locations they're all over the place it's impossible to figure out which one is which thing um, so I, I really need a better way and I'm going to show you a better way that's much more uh, much simpler and much more effective so the first thing what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to actually make a text map that's going to look very uh, much prettier. And so what's going to happen here is I'm going to first I'm going to make a string array. So what I've created here is, uh, this is a string array. As you may remember, uh, an array is just a list of objects. It's, it's the most primitive kind of list you can make. It's really just a uh, set of places in memory to hold things. And it's, it's, so it's a very uh, simple kind of thing. It has to be, once you say how many things are in there, uh, you can't add or subtract things. But for what we're doing, it's really just fine, actually. And what I'm going to do, I already have this over here, so I'm just going to copy and paste it to save some time. Um, and, uh, but you can, you can, uh, type this in yourself. This will be in the uh, demo lesson when it's finished so you can see it. But uh, so what's happening here, what you see is, so you see here I've got a line of text. What's going to happen is each star is going to represent a rock. Now uh, as it happens, uh, I know each uh, rock has a with uh, a size of about 40. I mentioned that before. And the screen has a width of 600 uh, in the x direction wide and 400 in the y direction high. Uh, what that means, right, 40 goes into 615 times. So uh, it's 15, it goes across, there's uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 this way and uh, 10 this way, 10 times uh, 4 is 400, obviously. And so you notice what I actually have is 10 strings. So this is, in quotes, right, uh, stars. And then the dot is going to be where my aphids are going to go. And then here I have a comma. Right, and so the comma is saying, and so the comma is saying we're putting another string in here. So there's actually ten items: one, two, three, four, five. There's ten items in our array. Uh, the star is going to be the rock. 
the dot is going to be the aphid and the capital P right now is going to be player. There's no reason it has to be these things. They, any of these things could be anything. Uh, I just figured this was the, uh, the, the best way to do it. And notice how I can actually see what my map is looking like in my code here, which is pretty nice. That's a lot easier uh, to do. Um, so if you want to, if you want to go to the demo, demo lesson after the finished one, you can just copy and paste this. Um, but the important part, if you want to make your own, you can copy and paste it and modify it, right? But uh, I have e I have 10 strings here, right? Notice starting each one, it has a length of 15. And uh, they're, they're, they're 10 high, right? 10 high. Also notice here, notice uh, there are certain places where uh, the, the rocks um, go all the way around. But notice how there's openings here. There's an opening at this end and an opening at this end. Uh, I want the openings to be uh, uh, on opposite sides of the screen because at some point we're going to wrap around, right? So notice I have an opening at point uh, the fifth point here which means I'm going to want an opening at the fifth point there so you can go through up there and come out the bottom that's how you you're going to want to make your map if you're going to do it this way um, and also notice how I try and lay it right so there's right see how these paths are in a row I want I want a path for the player to be able to get through right notice here uh, I have paths for the player to get through um, but it's okay because once you once you do this oh and, I, and I'm trying to avoid uh, having any dead ends so you won't get uh, trapped with our uh, opponents which we'll have in a minute uh, chasing you down a dead end that you can't get out that's not really fair what I'm going to teach you now is how to make this uh, read the map um, and uh, make it read the map and add things to the map as it as it goes along. Um, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make a method that's going to read this map and draw it. Uh, and what we want it to do is we want it to go for each individual string here, notice we have 10 strings, we want it to go through and read each individual character. Uh, let me explain really quick. Uh, so uh, a string, as I think you know by now, is just a bunch of characters in quotes. Um, and it could be anything, uh, it could be uh, a word, uh, words, the Declaration of Independence. Uh, uh, string could also be uh, Chinese characters or poop emojis, pretty much anything actually. Um, uh, in this case we're dealing with just um, uh, dots and stars and the letter P. Um, and these are uh, also represented by a number. Um, the first 256 characters that exist uh, uh, for historical reasons because of where computers were invented uh, are the characters in the English alphabet and the English punctuation marks and some other stuff like that. Uh, actually first 128 really. Um, and so each of these is represented by some number and is in fact what an, a string really is is just a array of numbers actually and can be returned as an array of numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to say for each item in this list and then for each character place whatever uh, what, whatever particular actor we want in that location. And so I'm going to make a method and I'm going to call it, I'll call it public void. Uh, so, I mean, sorry, should be private because no one else is, uh, no other class is going to be calling it. It's void because it's not return anything. Um, <clears throat> and I'll call it draw map. Uh, no arguments. The only information with data we need is what we already have up here. This is actually a property, which means that um, we don't need it to. Uh, it's a property which we don't need to pass it or get it from anywhere. And so now we're we, we're drawing our map. And so we're going to do a for loop. I don't 
know that I've done a for loop before. For loop is a very common thing, and so it's it's a uh, uh, for loop can be done in different ways. One way we can do it is by uh, counting, um, saying for basically one to some number, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say um, starting from zero up to the length of this uh, particular array, which is going to be ten uh, particular strings here. So we're going to I'm going to say for. So when we do a for array. The first part, uh, there's there's three in parentheses after the four. If you're doing it by counting by numbers, uh, you're going to do um, uh, you, you're going to declare first an integer variable. So I'm going to say int i equals zero. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It has to be a number, not necessarily an integer. Then I'm going to say the condition by which it stops. So this uh, notation is kind of confusing when people first learn it. That's why I'm doing it slow. And I'm going to say i is less than, and then I'm going to say text map dot length. Um, so basically what's, and then I'm going to say i plus plus, and then so what's happening here? It means it's going to start out, i is going to be 0, right? And then it's going to go and do whatever's in here, and then the second time, i is going to be 1. Then it's going to be 2, then it's going to be 3, up until uh, i gets to be actually 9, because the first is 0, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When i gets to be 10, it will no longer be less than the length of this text map, which is 10, and so it'll stop. It won't go anymore. This is a sort of standard uh, uh, iteration loop where you're iterating by a number. Uh, and we have to use a number here because we're going to use these numbers to tell, me, tell us what coordinates uh, we're going to have. Now what we want to do is we want to get the line, uh, the particular string of that number. So this is an array. This is item 0 of the array. This is item 1 of the array. This is item 2 of the array and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, string, uh, we'll call it uh, uh, map line equal so this is one line of the map and it's text map and then in brackets I'm gonna say I so this is a very conventional thing to do with an array right so we're gonna go through right so what's gonna happen is I is gonna become right I is gonna increase so the first time around this is gonna go through I is gonna be uh, zero right and so this is line zero so te text so uh, map line uh, well, I will be this right the, then we're gonna get uh, I will be one so we'll get map line one which is this all the way up to map line nine which is gonna be this one right so this is our uh, so we're, we're so now what we need to do is we need to iterate through each individual character in this string remember the characters, uh, although they look like um, they are characters, they're actually represented by some number because uh, we're dealing with uh, English alphabet and uh, regular punctuation marks. It's going to be some number between 0 and 128. Doesn't really matter which one it is right now. Um, uh, if so, uh, what we're going to so what we'll do now is I'm going to do another for loop inside a for loop. So it's it's going to go so for each line, right? So I'm going to start with the first line, then I'm going to go 0, then I'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is going to go uh, 15 times here, right? So uh, we're going to do another for loop, so we'll do 4. Now we need to declare another integer variable. And in this case, uh, we, we can't use i because we already have i. I have to call it something else. So I'll say int j equals 0, and then we'll say uh, j less than and we, we want this to be less than map line dot length and when I say length right um, uh, length um, is so the length of the map line notice how uh, I have length here and I've got little open and close curly brackets uh, this is an important thing to understand map line is a string a string in 
Java, Java is an object, and uh, as an object, it has various methods, various things you can do. You can actually see, right, if I do dot and I hit control space, I have all kinds of actual things I can do with a, uh, a string. All kinds of things that a string can do kind of all by itself. And one of the things it can do is tell you its length. And so we're saying um, we want j to start at zero and go up to uh, whatever the length of the map line string is, which the map line string is going to tell me itself by get running the length method. And then we, um, we're going to do j plus plus. Oh, if I didn't explain what the plus plus means, uh, this is a shortcut for saying this, j equals j plus one. This would do exactly the same thing. This means j is increasing each time. This means i is increasing each time. So we instead we say j plus plus, it means j is going to increase one each time. If I wanted it to increase by another number, I could do it a different way. But this this basically means increase j by one each time, which is again the same as saying j equals j plus one. And uh, do an open and close curly brackets here. So now we want to get the character at whatever point j is. And so another thing that a string can do is give me a character at a particular point. So when it gives me a character, it's not going to be a string. A string, remember, is a bunch of characters. We're getting a single character, a single uh, item here. So, and the uh, type, the variable type there is char, which uh, is pronounced care, usually, because it's short for character. Uh, sometimes they say car, even though I know that's not really right. Um, it should be pronounced care, for short for character. right? So this is a new data type that you haven't seen before. Uh, it's technically a number between 0 and 256, which is one uh, byte. Um, this cannot represent every possible character. All it's going to really represent is the letters in the English alphabet, uh, the common punctuation marks and maybe some uh, other common characters like Inyas. I'm not entirely sure about that. But uh, if you're dealing with like uh, Japanese letters, um, uh, Cyrillic letters, uh, uh, smiley face emoji or anything else it's it's not going to fit in there it's it's only going to so this is only going to represent uh the the uh mostly the english letters uh mostly for historical reasons because computers were invented in places where people spoke english so uh we're going to say car uh, we'll just say uh map car equals map line dot and then We'll do car at, right? See that, that's the car, that's uh, the car at. Um, and uh, so car at, and it says index, right? The index is what character, right? So car at J. So what's going to happen here, um, we're going to say J equals zero. Uh, J is less than, so, so what's going to happen is uh, when I'm on the first line, it's going to start. J is going to be zero, and so it's going to get the character at zero, which is this one here. And then the next time, j is going to be 1, so it's going to get the character at 1, which is this one here, all the way up to uh, j is going to be 14. It's going to get the character at 14, which is the 15th character. Uh, this is confusing for some people when they start. Remember, we always start counting at 0. So if we're counting 15 things, the last thing is actually number 14. So um, fortunately, the computer is going to do that for us. We don't have to know what number we're going to be on. So this is the character, right? And so now we're ready to actually uh, insert the thing, um, whatever it is, which is a obstacle or a player or a aphid or whatever. So, so the first thing we might want to know is where are we inserting it? We need an x and a y coordinate. Uh, so let's uh, find an x and a y coordinate. So what's going to happen? Well, the first time I do it, uh, the first time I go through, I is going to be uh, so. So uh, it, it, this is uh, to this is I right. I is going down this way, right? It's going here, then here, then here, then here. Since we're going down, I is going to be the y, right? And uh, the j, which is going this way, is going to be the x. Um, so what we're going to do? So we'll say uh, uh, I is actually going to be i times forty. And uh, int x, so x, x, uh, j is moving across this way, right? So x is going to be j times 40, right? So um, 
and so this is going to uh, start at zero, then go 40, right? So um, 40, 180, and so on. I mean 40, 80, 120, and so on, right? So now we have an X and a Y coordinate where we're going to put these things, right? And then uh, now what we can do, we need to add the actual object. Um, so at this point, one way I could do it would be to use an if statement, right? Because what I'm really doing is I'm saying if it's a star, put in an obstacle. If it's a dot, put in a target. And if it's a P, put in a player. Also, I'm going to add some other stuff like opponents. And who knows, maybe later on I'll add uh, like a big thing that allows me to eat the opponents, like the big dots in Pac-Man, right? I might add who knows what other kind of stuff I might add as I start this, right? I might have five or seven or 15 um, obstacles, right? I mean, different uh, kinds of actors, right? So one way that you would think to do it is I would say, uh, if it's this, add that, else if it's this, add the other thing, else if it's this, add the other thing, else, right? So have a bunch of if statements in a row. That's kind of uh, sloppy, really. And and it, it's sloppy for a reason that probably you can, can kind of see. It's going to get really uh, big and messy. Well, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called the switch statement, which is really sort of actually just a compact sort of if statement. Um, and it basically saying a switch for this particular thing. And in this case, do this. If this case, do the other. I should say the switch only works when you're dealing with a uh, uh, with the character when the, I mean when the um, variable you're dealing with is a number. Uh, the variable we're going to be dealing with is map map care, right? That's the actual thing that's going to be either a star or a dot or whatever. This is of type care, which is as I told you a few times before a number. So switch works here fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say switch C uh, map care. And then I'm going to do an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. <coughs> and now I'm going to, so now what I want to do is I say, I want to say in the case that the map care is a, um, in the case that the map care is the uh, uh, star character, put in a obstacle at uh, the X and Y coordinates that I've already figured out. So we'll say, case. So here's what we do. We say case and then now it's important here that we be doing uh, oops, single quotes. Uh, the single quotes are important because we are representing not a string but a character. So in uh, Java, Java, I keep saying JavaScript. This is not JavaScript. In Java, uh, sing when I put things in double quote, when I put something in double quotes, like up here, it's a string, right? When I put something in single quotes, I'm saying it's a character. That means it can only be one thing. If you put more than one thing in single quotes, Java is going to give you a syntax error. So uh, I'm saying in the case that the particular that this map care is a star here, okay. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add add object right is uh, one of the um, uh, methods here. The object that we're adding is a new obstacle. So I'll say new new obstacle, and the x is just going to be this x we have right here. So x is just going to be x and y is just going to be y. And then uh, a convention, by convention, I say break here. Break means don't look to see if there's any other cases that you need to check. Otherwise, it's going to go, so I'm going to have a bunch of different cases. I'm going to have a case for a dot. I'm going to have a case for a p. And then later on, I'll have other cases to, for other, as I add other characters that can represent other things. So this is saying just add the thing and then finish this switch statement and go on to just break from this and continue and go back to what it was. Um, you don't actually have to put this in technically, but it's uh, by convention you should do it. Um, something else you should always have when you have this is you have default 
and then I'll just say default just means break break default means if you don't find anything else again if you don't put in a default it also is will work probably but this is a convention that you should always have in a switch statement you should have a default there at the very end which is uh, what happens if you don't nothing else works and now it's not going to do it yet because I haven't called my method. But if I go up here, right, so uh, I have my method is called draw map, the draw map method. So if this is working right and I say draw map, so I'm calling this draw map method up here in my green world, right, just to remind you, this is the constructor. This is the thing that runs automatically when the new world uh, actually is created, um, which happens right away in uh, Greenfoot uh, scenario when I uh, compile it. And so when this happens, I, what I should see is all my rocks in just a minute. Sometimes it takes a very long time to compile, and there it is, all my rocks. We actually do have a little bit of a problem. You'll notice that uh, the rocks aren't quite lined up. What I'd really like is this rock to be about down here, and that's because it's locating it. The first rock is right at 0, 0, and it's pl placing the middle on 0, 0, which is right up here. So that's an easy enough thing to fix. Um, so I'm really, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one thing. So the rock is, uh, is 40 wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over by 20 and move it down by 20, move the location. So I'll just say plus 20 here and down here, I'll also say plus 20. Um, you might notice that I am hard coding the numbers in here. It's not perfect. Um, uh, ideally, really, what I'd like is the width of the rock. Um, but in this case, the this whole map really depends on the rock being exactly size 40. Um, otherwise, it's 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 not going to uh, be quite the right thing. So I'm, I'm actually going to leave my numbers hard coded, even though that's not the best coding practice in the world here. Um, and now you'll see, yay, look, there's all my stuff there, right? And uh, so now all I need to do is add in uh, the aphids and the player. Um, we actually have add object player. We don't actually need that anymore because we're going to put this in the map here, right? Because the P here is going to represent the player and the dot is going to represent the uh, target, uh, player and target, right? So now it's really easy, right? So uh, now I just have to add a new case, right? So, and the way the case works, right, you say case. Uh, in here, normally in a case, you'd write a number. And you could write a number here. Uh, but when I put a star in single quotes, to, Java knows that really is a number. And so uh, Java is fine with that. So um, if I knew what number um, a star was, which I don't because I don't have the ASCII table memorized, then uh, I could just put that number there. But I, it's, it's better to do it this way because then anybody who looks at the code knows what uh, it's supposed to be. So now I can say case. Now what we want is uh, if I have a dot, then uh, so this is uh, the, the, the dot character, then we will do add object. And in this case, we're going to do new and we want target, comma, and then we'll do x, comma, y. And so, uh, and then the other thing, so, uh, and then we do break. We always do break. Uh, this is just a convention, right? When I do a, a switch statement, I do break at the end of every case. Unless, in the very rare case, I actually do want it to go down and see if there's other cases that it might... Uh, want to deal with, but it's very rare that you would ever want that to happen. And then uh, last of all, we'll say case P. Uh, I think I had a capital P for player. Let me just make sure. Yep, that's a capital P for player. Again, these could be absolutely anything. There's no particular reason any of these needs to be. I just picked characters that kind of look like a little bit shaped like what they're actually uh, representing. So we'll say add object, and now we'll say new player comma x comma y and so right so we're saying in the case that we have a uh, the number that represents a single star we'll do this in the case that we have a number that represents the dot do this in the case we have the number that represents the capital P do that and 
Um, so, and it's very important, again, these need to be single quotes, not double quotes. Uh, and if you're doing uh, any other string, uh, an actual string rather than a character, you always have to use double quotes. Um, some programming languages uh, treat, uh, like, like uh, JavaScript, and uh, Python treats single quotes as, and double quotes as the same thing. Java does not. Uh, so it's double quotes represent a string. Single quotes represent a character. And so if I compile this now, there it is. Here's my character, and there's all my dots, all my aphids. And so now all I need, what I need to do next is uh, make the... Uh, make the bug start eating the aphids and then add some uh, make a scoreboard and add some opponents to try and eat the bug. I will see you when I do that.